Welcome back to the Daily Dose of Dopamine with Robert Cochran. I'm Susan Scarlett. And I just said to Robert, I, I love when people discover who we are, what we're doing. And we're actually in this little series of doses here asking for help. And it dawned on me a minute ago in the second dose um, that um, maybe it's easier to offer to help if you have the experience that we have, those of us who've done this, who've, who've experimented with this. And just for the record, <laughs> I had no background in improv when I first ran into this character. In fact, I had no interest in learning anything about improv because I didn't realize it at the time, but I was very insecure, very much feeling in out of my head so I couched it in it's not about the improv Robert I'm just trying to understand how how this impacts Parkinson's disease yeah, and yeah. you're like come and play and I said no 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 I don't need to come and play <laughs> and you said come and play and you wouldn't answer my question because you might not have known the answer I'm not sure <laughs> however once I did jump in the same box and was nervous and insecure and started having fun and kind of figured something out, but you introduce new games all the time. Uh, for the world at large, this is the kindest teacher on the planet. It's really fun to learn from him. <laughs> so um, uh, we have several needs and I'm gonna turn the next one over yeah. to you. I just want to yes and you for a moment, just to say that labeling everything you just did is A, vulnerable and B, freeing, right? We talk about that all the time of the freedom that happens when you label insecurity or you label vulnerability, you label fear, that those things that you didn't even realize were there imprisoning you, suddenly you get to swing them open too and you're empowered to be more of you. And this is, you know, the ask, as it were. This whole thing is a series of asks. Our ask right now, you know, we've talked about money from a couple levels. We talked about an accountant. We talked about fundraising. We're looking for within this space, we need a grant writer or again, a team of grant writers. Because yes, I was trained in grant writing as part of my PhD process. I can do it. As Susan said, that process, if I'm doing that, I'm not doing what the CEO job in my hope is the way I'd like to be a CEO, which is leading classes or training other people to lead classes or presenting in front of large groups to spread the message on who we are or writing a book or creating a film, you know, using all of these things to, again, raise up the awareness and uh, availability of these programs that we know affect not only the Parkinson's community, but we're starting to see others too. So this is where a grant writer is a specific skill set. And again, if you if it's not you listening person right now, if you wouldn't mind asking around in your community, sending out some emails or <clears throat> even this video to say, this company who does good stuff that I like is looking for a grant writer, a team of grant writers um, to help them, that'd be great. And, and to be clear, in case anyone's not, we are a 501c3 nonprofit. That's all official. And so that's what we're doing. So that's our ask here. We're looking for a grant writer. What I've what I've learned, what little I've learned about that world is that there are a lot of separate worlds within that world. You did do a grant, by the way, uh, the the Parkinson's uh, Foundation Community Grant. What was that experience like? You worked with Mike and me, Mike from Austin, CSE, um, <clears throat> and we love him. What was that experience like? Well, I was really grateful to you because you had given Mike and me kind of the bones for uh, it felt like we fit what they were looking for and so it felt good and and hopeful and fun to anticipate that and then it the process of waiting for someone else's time frame feels interminable especially if there's a need um, Another grant we applied for, the, the uh, foundation had changed the timing of the way they were thinking about their 
Great. There's one piece of your story you left out <clears throat> from the first one, the Parkinson mm -hmm. family. When well, we didn't get the grant, it felt? When we didn't get the grant, I kind of didn't know how to address that. It felt, um, it was um, confusing. It, it seemed like we were an ideal candidate for that funding. And so I was um, sad, hurt, felt almost like, wait a minute, did maybe Robert, maybe it's that they didn't come and play with us. Maybe they didn't understand it. Maybe it's really hard to put on paper something as rich and three dimensional as our, what we do is. I think the biggest takeaway I'd have is that grant writing is, is a specific skill. And even the best grant writers don't get all of their grants funded. So the bottom line, why we need a grant writer or team of grant writers is because it is a specific skill. It takes time. And it, for us to take that on would be missing out again on the, the things that we know we do primarily well. It's not that we can't do these things, but a grant writer who does these things specifically well could come join our team and be a real help to us. And figure out which grants to apply for. It, it's 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 a very complex process. And yeah, thank you for calling me on that because it was this is a sad moment. <laughs> it's fair, and it's something to know. So for all of you out there watching us right now, if you are a grant writer or if you know somebody in your community, if you could ask around, can you find a grant writer for this fine 501c3 yes and exercise? It's looking to again find sustainability funds and can show all the results needed and and have everything that I think would go into a great looking grant. Which you're like to meet you. This is today's daily dose. <laughs>